When looking for any information on the internet, most of us might turn to Google's internet search engine. The database that powers these search is called Bigtable, and it is also the power behind Gmail, Google Maps, YouTube, and many other internet applications. Hello everyone, this is Dhruv from Edureka, and I welcome you all to this session where I will be talking about Google Bigtable. So without any further ado, let's take a look at today's agenda. We will start this session by first understanding why there is a need for Google Bigtable and what actually it is. Then we will look at some of its key features. Moving ahead, we will understand the Bigtable's architecture and data model. And then finally, we will look at some of its use cases. So first, let's understand why do we need Bigtable. In the age of Internet of Things, data is only going to get bigger and more complex. Handling such a large amount of information requires an equally complex and powerful database and Bigtable seems to rise to that occasion. Even with the presence of other competitors in this space, here are some of the major reasons why you should consider Google's Bigtable for database needs at your organization. So first is lower costs. Google has introduced an interesting pricing strategy for Bigtable by separating the storage and computing needs of organizations. This makes Cloud Bigtable a very useful proposition for companies who might need to store large amounts of data over an extended period of time especially if they only require minimal access and manipulation of that information. This makes it more cost effective compared to competitors who usually charge for each read or write operation on the data. Google has even claimed that charges on Bigtable would translate to half the cost as compared to competitors, but this might depend on the required configuration among other factors. Second is its open source. So Bigtable is available as open source, which is a major advantage as it enriches the kind of comments and contributions it receives over time. Users are then assured a good degree of improvement and addition with an active developer base in the open source context. This also means that Bigtable would adhere to the required industry standards. For example, the edge base API, which is one of the most popularly used bases is seamlessly supported and organizations that already use products like Edgebase would find it doubly simple to set up Bigtable for their data. Third is high performance. Google is no stranger to high performance requirements and as Bigtable has already been used internally, there is not much doubt that it can provide the needful to external businesses customers as well. Much of the setup and initial storage calculation is done in an instinctive manner requiring minimal user inputs which results in saving much time and effort for new customers. Many initial users, including SunGuard and Qubit, have been more than satisfied with Bigtable's ability to handle large volumes of data that is supported by the ease of setting up and scaling as required. The analytics support provided by Google could also be invaluable for the needs of many data-heavy industries. Support is, it's highly secure. With large amounts of data, Concerns for data security also escalate just as much. So Bigtable offers a replicated storage strategy with algorithms for encryption of data, something that is sure to help allay these concerns. Customers can also bank on Google's expertise in the area with their long-standing experience of handling the privacy and security of large amounts of data. Fifth is maturity. So due to the simple fact that Bigtable has been used internally for a significant period of time by a data giant like Google, it can promise a high level of stability and maturity to its users. It is not at all comparable to a new and untested product and might probably score favorably on many fronts when compared to long-standing players in the arena as well. Due to its internal use, customers can also be sure of its continued availability and enhancement. Drawing on its strengths as an organization, Google also lists many of its service partners, including Python, CCRI, and SunGuard as companies who can build platforms to help support a faster transition to Bigtable. Now, what actually is Bigtable? Let's understand that. First of all, Google Bigtable is a key value database. A key value database is a data storage paradigm designed for storing, retrieving, and managing associative arrays and a data structure more commonly known today as dictionary or hash table. So Google provides the key value database service in the form of Bigtable. It is a distributed storage system for structured data. Also, it is compressed high performance proprietary data storage system, which is built on Google file system, Chubby Lock service, SS table, and few other Google technologies. You can see here how many of the world's leading companies are choosing Google Cloud to help them innovate faster, make smarter decisions, and collaborate from anywhere. 
Now moving ahead, let's understand some of the key features of Google Bigtable. So first of all, it has high throughput at low latency. So Bigtable is ideal for storing very large amount of data in a key value store and supports high read and write throughput at low latency for fast access to large amounts of data. Throughput scales linearly. You can increase QPS, means queries per second, by adding Bigtable nodes. Bigtable is built with proven infrastructure that powers Google products used by billions such as Search and Maps. Second is cluster resizing without downtime. It scales seamlessly from thousands to millions of reads and writes per second. Bigtable throughput can be dynamically adjusted by adding or removing cluster nodes without restarting, meaning you can increase the size of a Bigtable cluster for a few hours to handle a large load, then reduce the cluster size again, all without any downtime. Third is flexible and automated replication to optimize any workload. Write data once and automatically replicate where needed with eventual consistency, giving you control for high availability and isolation of read and write workloads. No manual steps needed to ensure consistency, repair data, or synchronize writes and deletes. Benefit from a high availability SLA of 99.99% for instances with multi cluster routines across three or more regions. Now let's understand the architecture of Cloud Big Table. So we will understand it step by step. So, first of all, you can see here like how client requests go through a front end server and then nodes are organized into a cloud big table cluster of a cloud big table instance. Each node in the cluster handles a subset of the request to the cluster and then uh, nodes are added to increase the number of simultaneous requests to handle maximum throughput. The table is shared into blocks of contiguous rows called tablets similar to edge based regions. Tablets are stored on Colossus Google's file system in SS table format. An SS table is an ordered immutable map from keys to value, and both are byte strings. Tablet is associated with a specific node, like writes are stored in Colossus's shared log as acknowledged. Then data is never stored in nodes themselves. Nodes have pointers to a set tablets stored on Colossus. Rebalancing tablets from one node to another is very fast. Recovery from the failure of a node is very fast. When a cloud big table node fails, no data is lost. I hope you have understand the architecture. Let's now have a look at the data model of Google Big Table. A big table is a sparse, distributed, persistent, multi-dimensional sorted map. The map is indexed by a row key, column key, and a timestamp. Each value in the map is an uninterpreted array of bytes. I settled on this data model after examining a variety of potential uses of a big table-like system. As one concrete example that drove some of our design decisions, suppose we want to keep a copy of a large collection of web pages and related information that could be used by many different projects. Let us call this particular table the web table. In web table, we would use URLs as row keys, various aspects of web pages as column names, and store the contents of the web pages in the contents column under the timestamps when they are fetched as illustrated in the figure. So in this figure, you can see a slice of an example table that stores web pages. The row name is a reversed URL. The contents column family contains the page contents and the anchor column family contains the text of any anchors that reference the page. Okay. CNN's home page is referenced by both the Sports Illustrated and the My Look home pages. So the row contains columns named anchor CNNSI.com and the anchor mylook.cm. Each anchor cell has one version. The contents column has uh, three versions at timestamps T3, T5, and T6. Now let's understand the keys in the data model. So first is row key. So the row keys in a table are arbitrary strings. Currently up to 64 KB in size through 10 to 100 bytes is a typical size for most of the users. Every read or write of a data under a single row key is atomic, regardless of the number of different columns being read or written in the row. A design decision that uh, makes it easier for clients to reason about the system's behavior in the presence of concurrent updates to the same row. Bigtable maintains data in lexicographic order by row key. The row range for a table is dynamically partitioned. Each row range is called a tablet, which is the unit of distribution and load balancing. As a result, reads of a short row ranges are efficient and typically require communication with only a smaller number of machines. Clients can exploit this property by selecting their row keys so that they could get good locality for their data accesses. Then the second key is for like the column family. So column keys, I mean. So column keys are grouped into set called column families, which form the basic unit of access control. All data stored in a column family is usually of the same type. 
we compress data in the same column family together. So a column family must be created before data can be stored under any column key in the family. After a family has been created, any column key within the family can be used. It is our intent that the number of distinct column families in a table be small, in the hundreds of at most. Okay, and that families rarely change during operation. In contrast, a table may have an unbounded number of columns. A column key is named under the syntax family is to qualifier. So column family names must be printable, but qualifiers may be arbitrary strings. An example for column family. For the web table is language which stores the language in which a web page was written we use only one column key in the language family and it stores each web pages language id another useful column family for this table is anchor each column key in this family represents a single anchor as shown in figure the qualifier is the name of the referring site the cell contents is the link text access control and both disk and memory accounting are performed at the column family level in our web table example, we can see like their controls allow us to manage several different types of applications. Some that add new base data, some that read the base data and create derived column families, and some that are only allowed to view existing data and possibly not even to view all of the existing families for privacy reasons. Now, the third key is timestamps. Each cell in a big table can contain multiple versions of the same data. These versions are indexed by timestamp. Big table timestamps are 64 bit integers. They can be assigned by big table, in which case they represent real time in microseconds or be explicitly assigned by client applications. Applications that need to avoid collisions must generate unique timestamps themselves. Different versions of cell are stored in decreasing timestamp order so that the most recent versions can be read first. To make the management of version data less vulnerable, we support two per column family settings that tell big table to garbage collects cell versions automatically. The client can specify either that only the last n versions of a cell be kept or that only new enough versions be kept. Example only keep values that were written in the last seven days. In our web table example, we set the timestamps of the crawl pages stored in the contents. Column to the times at which these pages versions were actually crawled. The garbage collection mechanism described above lets us keep only the most recent three versions of every page. Now let's understand the use cases for Cloud Bigtable. You can use Google Cloud Bigtable to store and query all of the following types of data. The first is marketing data such as purchase histories and customer preferences. Second is uh, financial data such as transaction histories, stock prices and currency exchange rates. Then Internet of Things data such as usage reports from energy meters and home appliances. Also the time series data such as CPU and memory usage over time for multiple servers and last like graph data such as information about how users are connected to one another. With this we come to the end of today's session of Google Big Table. I hope you had a great time learning and understanding about it and if you have any queries please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Until next time, thank you.